So as you continue your pen and ink perspective drawing, you should have at least five line weights to start with to achieve your values. So you have all three technical pens, you have 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, but then you also have a fine tip Sharpie and a thick Sharpie. So whenever drawing this, you can see how I have my image printed out. If you're just working off your iPad, you can always zoom out and use that Autodesk Sketchbook app to achieve the location of your horizon line and vanishing points. So what I've done is I've just put two pieces of scrap paper underneath it and taped them so that way they don't, well, they stay relative to the image. But as you can see, my vanishing points are way off of my image. If I tried to put them on the image, I'd be getting this crazy wide angle perspective uh, distortion happening, um, kind of like a fisheye lens does. So as I draw this out, all of my perspective lines are converging to my vanishing points. So I have identified my horizon line on my image. I've also figured out where my vanishing points should go. This one is off my page again, so it's a good idea to just tape a piece of scrap paper on here. That way you can just project those lines and that vanishing point stays consistent to your image. So as you are using your ink pens, it's best to start light and then go dark. So I'm gonna just start with my thinnest pen and start to apply some of the ink to this wheel. So as I do this, I'm using different hatching lines. I'm just using straight lines to do most of this. You can see I'm doing some cross hatching as I get darker, but um, let's go ahead and start doing some of this wagon. So I don't have all the details drawn yet. This is just for the demonstration, but if I'm doing this little piece of this wood right here, you can see it's darker along the edge, has a highlight for where it's from it being three dimensional. It has a darker edge, but then there's also a gradient happening as it goes back towards this darker area. So I'm gonna start in that dark area. You don't wanna outline, you, but you do want to create the, the proper value. So I know it comes over and has this three dimensional quality to this shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of add that now. My desk is a little wobbly. And then I'm gonna just consider the contours of the shape. So this is just a rectangle or a block of wood. So as it angles down here, I'm going to keep these hatching lines going in the direction of the side of this piece of wood. So I'll just keep those lines going up. Then I'm going to come in the direction of this side and go the other way as it gets darker. Here. If I need to make it darker, I'll then hatch in the opposite direction. Instead of going the opposite direction for this side, I'm going to follow the diagonal. And it's darker towards the base, so I'm actually not going to draw that line the whole way out and do something like that. Now the top isn't white, so you could use stippling, but very, very carefully add a couple lines, and I'm going to follow the contour so it comes up and over at a horizontal. So I'm going to do that for all of these shapes. If you can see here along this piece, it comes across this wagon, it's really dark in this corner. Use a straight edge if you need it to get straight lines. Then it has this diagonal coming in here and a diagonal here. Now, I'm not outlining. What I'm doing is I've noticed that this has a dark edge, so it's gonna get darker anyway, so that outline is going to disappear. Now, as I start this, I'm going to follow the diagonals as I start hatching this. And you can see I space them out a lot. But what I can do is just come in here and start adding more in those darker areas by splitting the distance of the lines. And I don't have to draw them all the way up. I'm also going to start doing cross hatching lines in a parallel line as this edge of the wagon. So I'm gonna come across here. I want that to look like it's further back. So I'm gonna to continue to add lines until it's the right value and I'm always going to consider the direction or the contour of these surfaces. And I haven't even gotten to my other pens yet. So if I want this to be a little darker in this corner, I can go ahead and start thickening 
some of these contours. Now this pen is actually going dead, but what this actually does, <laughs> that's a benefit to me right now, is it's not allowing a lot of ink to escape the felt tip. So I can add a gray value to the white of the page without actually adding a lot of mark making. So it, it's a nice way to kind of cheat, but also tone down your values as you're working. So if you do have a pen that's dying on you, use it for what it's good for. My fine tip one is working really well, so I'll just continue to come back in here and layer the marks until my values are dark enough. As you can see, that's looking further away. However, this front tip, this area right here, it's a little bright still. I'm gonna bring a line across for this edge. And just be careful you don't overdo it, because you can always go darker, but you can't erase this stuff. All right, and I'm gonna to continue to do that to all of the details of my objects. So even these little posts coming down the side of the wagon, I'm gonna to try to follow those contours. So the wood comes, if you look at the image, if I just draw on this here, you can see it comes out, it has an edge, and then it goes back into space following those vanishing point lines. So what I'm going to do as I draw the contours, I'll come straight out on the dark edge. And I'll layer these closer because it's a darker value. And then they go back into space. So I'll actually draw those towards the vanishing point and I'll space these out further to make them appear as a lighter value. As I draw it on my drawing, it will appear very similar to that and you should achieve a perfect value of this image or get as close as possible. Some of these more organic areas like the grass, I can add linear marks. However, think about all those different hatching options that you have. I don't have to do very linear marks because it's not geometric, it's more organic. So maybe I do squigglies or maybe I do stippling. I'm actually gonna use stippling to do the cast shadow. That way I can fade it out into the rest of this grass, into these rocks in the background a little easier. When I get to the, the building to, next to it, I might select to eliminate this part of the building because it's going to distract or detract from the wagon where it's kind of disguising this seat here to this old wagon. So I'm gonna leave this out and kind of fill in with some of these other details or make it up as I go. Um, I don't want white space though because it's going to just look like this incomplete drawing. I do want it to have a horizon line or a ground that this wagon is sitting on. So you'll see this horizon line kind of come across and I'll, I'll put in some rough details of the building in the background or this barn, but most of it's gonna be the cast shadow and then some plants coming off with just a little horizon line. All right, so continue to do this. Take your time because you don't wanna mess up. It is in ink um, and use all those methods and those, use that sketchbook assignment as practice for figuring out your hatching and working with these technical pens. All right, have a lot of fun. Look forward to seeing your finished drawings. Mm -hmm.